man. Well, with that, that was, that's so much fun. Just had to do that. Um, I just want to welcome everyone to this webinar with our amazing panelists here today, who I will introduce in just a few minutes. But first, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Stephanie Grice and Marketing and Education Coordinator here at Travify. Um, and I just want to thank you once again, you know, for coming here today and joining us. Our first Travify Academy webinar of 2022. And I really think this is going to be like the best webinar ever. I'm not even kidding. I've been so excited for this webinar because the idea for this webinar is just to get excited, excited for 2022 and to help inspire motivation for sales, success. And, but with that being said, you know, we know this is still such a challenging time and we know that there's still going to be challenging times ahead, but there's still so much good happening and a lot of positive. And we really just think it's going to be it's going to just keep getting bigger, basically. So that's why we wanted to bring on our panelists here today, talk about amazing, um, you know, things happening in the industry, amazing stories um, and advice and tips. So much of that. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be really, really great. Um, but also just to quickly share, if this is your first time joining Travify Academy webinar, um, just to give you a quick overview of what Travify Academy is for is we really just designed this to be free educational um, resource just to further Travify's mission to power the success of travel professionals. So you can always find um, webinar replays like this one after we get done here today, um, other articles and just other content at Academy travify.com and like us on Facebook too because that's where we'll keep all of our podcast episodes everything you'll find it all there um, but a couple housekeeping things really quick to go over is one this webinar is being recorded so I already heard it go off so it's not the phantom we think it's recording it really is which is thank gosh um, <laughs> and so so it's recording um, so we'll put it on our YouTube channel after um, we're done here today and then um, another thing with the, the questions, we really want to pay attention to questions as they're coming in and see if we can answer them if they work out, you know, what we're talking about. Um, so with that being said, make sure you put your questions in the Q&A box in Zoom. So um, I know a lot of times people use the chat, but the chat's just really hard to pay attention to and, and catch things. So if you can put those in the question box, um, that would be great. And then um, Scott and I will be kind of watching that in. Um, calling those out during. The other thing is I know that um, we had a giveaway. So to make this webinar a little different than others is we decided to have um, a giveaway. And we already selected, we've randomly selected right before this, uh, five winners who will receive some prize packs from um, Travify. So we'll, give, we'll be giving some. But also our good friends at Avanti Destinations um, also offered a few prize packs as well. Um, but I'm going to share those at the end. So of course, you know, best best for last you gotta just wait but we'll also be reaching out to everybody too so we will follow up after this webinar send you an email and let you know that you've won um but okay with all that being said i'm going to welcome our speakers here today so here they are so first up we have bill Coyle, who is the vice president of agent engagement at khm travel group we also have Jill Labar, who is Vice President of Business Development at Oasis Travel Network. We have Vanessa McGovern, who is Co-Founder and Chief Sales Officer of Gifted Travel Network. And then we also brought in our very own Scott Rutz, who's Vice <laughs> President of Sales and Marketing at Travify. So you've probably seen him if you've been on our webinars before. We just... We pulled them in, had to, had to bring them in. I love that you laughed as you introduced me. <laughs> we brought in that guy again. That guy. <laughs> no, it's going to be, you know, we, we brought it. We got to bring in our very own sometimes. So, yeah. So that's what we have. So we have such an amazing panel here today. And to give you a, just kind of an overview of what this is going to look like today is we're going to, we kept this structured to just be more of a conversation just about what's going on in the industry right now. And we really, as I mentioned earlier, we want to focus on the positive things, you know, to offer some motivation because like I said, we generally think it's going to be a big year. And actually it is because the data will prove it, which we'll get into here. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start this because I know we have a lot to cover. So I don't want to spend too much time. We could be here all day if we wanted. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is data, as I just mentioned, because data, it's in the numbers. The proof is in the pudding. So 
there's a lot of good stuff happening. I've already talked, I was chatting with um, all of our panelists, um, you know, within the past week and the data that all of you told me is so insane. I want to go through all of it. So first, Bill, I want to start with you because I know that KHM group has seen so much happen and also a lot of new agents jumping on board as well. So can you share that with us? Yeah, so we average um, uh, anywhere between 80 and 100 agents a month who are joining KHM, uh, the travel advisor community, right, which is which is what we like to see. We want all of the people in the industry to be getting out new agents all the time. But Although that number took a dip, you know, obviously in 2020, 2021, we're seeing exponential growth in that, right? We're, we're averaging above that threshold right now. And it's not just that we're getting new agents, it's the quality of the new agents uh, advisors that we're getting. So we're super excited about what that advisor who's coming into the industry now looks like. And I want to definitely go into that a little bit more later, but we're also concentrating in our top level to make sure that we're concentrating, taking a look at uh, in involving ourselves in the business of our top agents as well. And when we take a look at that, some of the stats are to see that one of our top agents is gonna make $60,000 commission in March of this year. So it's like, oh gosh, you know, some of those num numbers look staggering, right? Because when you think about your bread and butter business and all of a sudden there's pent up demand for even more, it's just exponential growth. That's insane. That is so incredible. Really, really awesome. And just again, and especially with just everybody entering now the industry, I mean, it's, it's hot, it's cool. It's hot market very much. So, yes. and Jill with Oasis travel network, I know, um, you were, when we, you were comparing 2019 to 2021 mm -hmm. and your top 10 advisors were up 111%. Yeah. That was absolutely amazing to see what the very top advisors have done and looking at our very best year, which was 2019. And even though we were off to a slower start in January because we had that announcement of uh, return testing for the USA and that made consumers a little shaky, really by, the, by, the, by March, the end of Q1, we really saw everybody buckle down and say, okay, we've got to figure this out. People still want to travel and we need to stay in business. And they're the ones who, that really, they surged in their business. So when we look, when we compared our top 10 in 21 to the top 10 of 19, it was an 111% increase in business, which awesome. is amazing. But the, the success in the data didn't stop just at the top 10. So we looked at everything from the top 50, the top 100 to the top 200. And so when we looked at the top 200 in the two years, the top 200 were still up 42% over their very best year. So that tells you it's not just a select few. If you're embracing the changes and the challenges and adapting your business and look at where can you travel, people want to travel. So where can you go? Let's figure that out. So maybe this isn't the year that you're going to do Tahiti, but maybe it's the year you're going to do that great Caribbean destination. We can make that happen for you. And that's really what you have to look at to make sure that your business is continuing to move forward and your revenue is flowing. Yeah, that is so awesome. And, and I know Vanessa too, that Gifted Travel Network had their best year in 2021 and your just the, December was the um, highest commission payout. It was. So as a network, uh, I share similar comments from Bill uh, when Bill mentioning attracting amazing talent to the industry right now. We are and we're seeing that on our end as well. And to Jill's point about uh, top talent, our top producers um, just surged in their business in 2021. Our number one producer was two million ahead of where they were, you know, in 2019. And we have more million dollar producers than we ever have. And it's just growing and growing and growing. And so, I mean, overall, we're up over 200% from 2019. And a lot of that is attributed to travel advisors working, um, just being very agile and leaning into luxury domestic especially yeah. that really helped a lot of their businesses mm -hmm. in 2020 of course and continuing that trend in 2021 and we're seeing it to continue again in 2022 so there's a lot of opportunities and another data point that I think I'd like to share broadly um, that really speaks to the market right now and how what an incredible opportunities there are to sell travel especially luxury travel is all you have to do is look at hotels 
The name of the game is availability. That's the biggest issue right now. And, mm -hmm. and hotels are charging more than they have before 2019. And there's some cases up like double their rates and they're getting it. And private aviation is up. And yes. all, all our top advisors have really leaned into that segment. And we have new advisors that have just joined. We had uh, two sisters that joined that last fall within three weeks of joining, they closed a world cruise and you know, $100,000 booking in the Maldives. So, I mean, it's there and the data shows it from the luxury segment because that segment is hot and it's being booked. So the question is, are they gonna book it with you? Don't you love Vanessa? Excuse me, Stephanie, for asking, no, but um, the idea of the new advisors that are coming in, they're like, just, we're just going to book, you know, it's no big deal. They don't, they're not even, they, they don't, don't have, have resistance. Deal with. Yes, exactly. And so that, that's just a huge opportunity for, for our new agents, our, our inexperienced agents to come in right. and say, I'm just going to book. I'm booking. Right. But think about the climate that we're all working in, right? The buzz term right now for 2021 is the great resignation, right? I keep reading articles about that. And so many, I mean, we work in the greatest industry in the world. This yes. is amazing. We're so lucky to work in travel. People are flocking to our industry because of the opportunities that exist right now. So true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bill, it's just like what you were saying too, just all the people, new agents starting, new advisors and, and the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, that's coming. Cause I know Jill, we were talking about that before too, is all of the independent, um, you know, contractors and just, you know, people building their business. There's so much right now of that. Yeah, and I'm absolutely. Sure that and with Vanessa's point about the great resignation, so many people who have decided, you know what, I, I, I want to focus on working for myself. Um, I don't want to have somebody else being my boss and jumping into a career that they feel passionate about. It's really made quite a difference. And I love the fact that the, the people who are joining our industry at the end of 1920 and then um, and into 21, they don't have any preconceived notions exactly. of what it's supposed to be like. Exactly. So they're, you know, they don't know what they're that the challenges that they're facing right now are any different than what they were previously. So they're just going for it, and they're seeing more success than some of the very seasoned advisors who stepped back because they got tired of booking and rebooking. Now, right. oh, you mean that's not how it, it is normally? Okay, well, I'll just keep doing that. <laughs> And the awesome. new and Vanessa, we were talking earlier, and I think it's really interesting how many more travel advisors have decided to embrace fees and There's, charge I mean, fees for their time and services. Absolutely. There's definitely a rise in that. I mean, if we think about it, we travel advisors, you are at the advantage right now because the, you don't need to chase clients. Your value has never been stronger. You have to, I have advisors in GTN that they're not going to work with clients if they don't get travel insurance. And if they're not vaccinated, like they have stipulate, I mean, they're picking GTN members are selecting their ideal clients and they're turning down business and they're charging fees for designing itineraries and cancellation fees as well. Fees have never been higher. I mean, you're a service provider. You have to charge a professional service fee. That's just what you do. And we are showing our value has never been more illuminated. So that's one of the silver linings of this, of the pandemic for sure. Mm -hmm. These are such a touchy, a touchy subject because there's two schools of thought and some, some advisors are tr totally embracing it. And then there are others who are resisting it. And you as a business owner have to decide which model works for you. There's no right or wrong. It's, it's really a personal choice. Some choose to build in a fee into the itinerary and not disclose it as a separate cost. Um, some are have it a very, as a, have it as an upfront cost, and I, I just I feel like it's one of those topics where I I won't say it's right or wrong. It's what's best for you. You're so neutral. I love it. I'm not in that at all. I'm like, you have to charge a fee. You're a service provider. I'm not going to hire a financial person if they're not going to charge me. We trade time for dollars, people. Yeah. So I love your response, Jill, and I'm so glad you shared that. And I, I agree with you, but you know, I'm also very emphatic about this. So I'm in the camp of like, charge a fee. And Vanessa, I would I would beg to ask the question that says for your top advisors who doubled or they're doing a million dollars more than they ever did before, I would imagine that they retooled and somehow uh, incorporated a fee into their into their new business operations. 
We have an advisor. In fact, I think I just saw her on the scroll in the chat, actually, that made more money in fees than she did in commission. Yeah, I that's amazing. That. Well, and there, there are lots of other stories of advisors that have changed the model on fees where essentially think of like a concierge medical provider. They are a concierge travel service provider yes. and yes. that they're literally building subscriptions for travel planning services, things like that, that you're hearing immense success for um, if you find the right target, right segment. The other interesting thing for us as a service provider that we've seen is that, you know, think about uh, like Jill's mentioning the people that are on either end uh, or either side of the fence. There are also people that pre pandemic were sitting right on top of the fence and couldn't make a decision. Should I charge fees? Should I not? COVID has accelerated the next, what was going to be several years of transitioning advisors to charging fees. It's, it's pushed them to charge fees because they literally have to, they, they need to, they see that they have to do it. Um, so there's still, I talk with so many advisors that, you know, Jill, just like you mentioned that uh, don't feel it's right for their business and want to make sure that they're providing the right service for the right clientele. And I thousand percent get that. Mm -hmm. And then there are advisors that they're like, nope. And they're in Vanessa's camp and they're like, <laughs> nope, I am getting paid for every minute that I'm working for you. And I totally respect both in there. It's just been interesting to see how much it's accelerated people's decisions on that. Mm -hmm. And I think definitely crisis seen... accelerates trends. Yes. yes. And what we've seen is we probably had the number of uh, advisors from 2019 or 2021 double in the ones who were charging fees. So it's a great thing. I'm not seeing a lot we're doing it to begin with. But I think the question for them becomes, can I charge a fee in my state? How do I charge a fee? What's the best way to process it? Am I doing it through supplier? Am I doing it another way? And I think there needs to be a big education piece on how they can go about setting their business up for fees. Definitely. Mm -hmm. It's I too bad there aren't good resources out there. I know. <laughs> right? yeah. It's too bad there I'm aren't kidding. post agencies out there that offer endless support and education on this <laughs> yes. topic. I love that, Scott. And, and, and to, to process fees for them. <laughs> yes. And to be very neutral, to be very neutral, ASTA, and I'll put a plug in for Travel Market Report. They've been putting out some really good content yes, around that. Yes. So they plug have. Some, some of our colleagues in the industry. Very good Absolutely point. Absolutely, they have. Mm -hmm. Well, I know what the next Travify Academy webinar is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Do fees. <laughs> no, it's always a hot up. one. Yes. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. the hottest topic. So I'm so glad we talked about it. I actually had it in here. I'm like, we have to talk about. I have, I have to give a shout out because we are, we're doing a, a peer to peer session because really this is where you're going to learn on what works and what doesn't. And I've titled it to fee or not to fee. That is the question. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's love a, that's I love that title. Um, we do peer to peers as well. We hosted a fee one with in, in recently, and it's so fascinating to me how diverse it is. Mm -hmm. How in terms of charging fees and to Bill's point about whether they roll it into the net with it or with a DMT or with a cruise line and even the partner. And there's mm -hmm. so many iterations of it. But the point is to charge one. Obviously, we know where <laughs> I stand on that. Um, but I, it, there's it's not a one size fits all for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's good to be in a host agency like Oasis and KHM and, G and GTN that create the space for these conversations so that you can all understand what your peers are doing and then you can decide what's best for you. Right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, just a quick thing about uh, about one of the uh, advisors who posted something that says they will not charge fee. It could be something that you implement for new uh, new clients as well. You don't necessarily have to go back and charge your old ones, uh, your current ones, I'm sorry. So it's something, you're right, Stephanie, it could be a whole different webinar, but yeah. um, I, I love that Jill brought it open and Vanessa closed it up right there. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Yes. Could, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, great conversation there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this a little bit differently on this one. So what I want to talk about next, because this is a personally my favorite part of this webinar is this real life stories of the success stories, but not just success stories, but also just, you know, letting you know that things are actually really happening if you know especially you might hear about it in your communities that you're in um but it's just really nice to share those stories so um scott i'm, I'm gonna start with you on this one um my good friend scott is that you get to talk to a lot of advisors um, and suppliers tour operators because at travify we work with all kinds of different people in the industry so what type of success are you hearing and seeing from or is there anything that comes to mind yeah, definitely. Lots of lots of great stories. Um, and it's been very refreshing over the last six months to not just 
think, you know, the recovery and ramp back up is, is going to happen, but actually to start hearing about it from travel advisors and give you a couple quick little anecdotes. So for example, in October, I was in, in uh, New Orleans for one of our host agency partners, Departure Lounge, um, that uh, they were doing their annual conference. And I was chatting, having a cocktail, like we all do at conferences, um, and uh, and chatting with an advisor. Cocktail and, hour is where the magic happens. There oh, you yes. go. There you go. <laughs> um, but I was chatting with them, and this was the first time they said a phrase to me that I had heard in almost two years. They said, yeah, I'm starting to get some quote and, quotes and, uh, and uh, inquiries for Europe. Uh, so I'm, I've been working a ton on that. And I almost did a, like a double take because <laughs> literally for 18 months, almost two years, yes, I would hear about advisors booking a river cruise in 2023, 2024. But it's the first time I had started to hear that clients felt things were starting to stabilize enough that they could plan a trip in the relatively near future. And that was just super, super refreshing to me. Yes, there are still a lot of variables that the industry and destinations uh, are, are in market, certain markets are working out. Um, but it was interesting to hear that, you know, the other things in terms of Travify's partners uh, that we've been seeing and hearing about, like Cyber Monday was one of the largest sales, gross sales days and booking days in a long time for some of our partners. That's huge. But then when you start combining that with other areas that you're hearing about of the quote unquote myth of the pent up demand of travel, it's actually quite real. When you start looking at stepping back from a macro perspective of the, the economies as a whole, you're starting to see that there's an unprecedented amount of uh, savings save mm -hmm. stored up, discretionary income stored up that your clients have been sitting on and they want to use it. Combined with, you know, you hear other stories like uh, Stephanie and I were chatting with uh, Alex from AMA uh, uh, several months ago, and they said before 2022 even started, it was already their biggest year on the, on record. So things, things like that are all pointing to huge, huge um, comeback uh, within bookings. And so I often like, as I chat with advisors that are still feeling kind of discouraged, I just tell them, hold on, you've got some great business coming your way. Uh, even if you're not feeling it quite yet, like every every sign, every signal we're seeing and hearing is pointed mm -hmm. in the right direction. Well, that would explain why my husband and I completely overspent on our upcoming Disney trip for the kids. <laughs> yep. because we're tired, we're exhausted. Yeah. My husband's been working from home. Like we haven't done anything good for the kids. Like I've been traveling, you know, as we work in the travel industry, my husband has not taken a trip. Obviously the kids have, you know, we did Florida, but this is like our first big family yes. trip since the pandemic and we're not sure changing ourselves. I'm staying at a nice place and I need to do it right. As is before I was like penny pinching, but I'm like, no. So I'm, I am like a perfect example of what you just described. Yeah, and I've heard that. Everywhere. I've heard that as well. One question that's just off the cuff that I'm thinking of here, uh, because this personally, I feel like, you know, especially waiting for um, Europe, you know, with just testing requirements and stuff. And, and then it's just kind of like when the new year came, I was like, I don't care anymore. I'm going full force ahead. And is that what I feel like a lot of agents are seeing travelers kind of change your perspective of like, you know what, I'm just going to have to live with this and I'm going to book it. And I just mm -hmm. need to be flexible. Are you seeing those changes? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For sure. And you, we have to get on with living. And mm -hmm. so we, we've got to just decide that this is the new normal and let's figure out how do we travel safely? How do we protect ourselves and be socially responsible and then get out there and live your life? My favorite line from the movie, The Help is called, is live your life, Peter, at the end of the movie. And, and I just find myself saying that over and over again, live your life. Why hold back? Um, I've been traveling myself since August of 2020. That was my first trip. I feel like a, in, as, as a travel professional, we need to be out there showing that it's safe, showing that you can travel responsibly and you can go and enjoy yourself. And you know that, that'll lead us to our conversation on social media because we're out there spreading the word that travel is okay. Yes. I could absolutely. not agree with Joe Moore. Um, I took my first trip actually exactly a year ago in January, 2020 to Costa Rica. Um, which I think is probably arguably the most COVID friendly so destination. How, how we lost the year, Vanessa. It was January of 21, not January of 2020. Oh. That you See, I don't, <laughs> You're this keeps happening to me. Yeah. You're absolutely right. A year ago was 2021. <laughs> and it was, it was, 
I, I will admit that I was very anxious. I mean, I think as anybody would be and just mm -hmm. the whole experience, but it is, it is. And then, you know, I continued with trips throughout the year. Um, and then you just learn to navigate it and the mm -hmm. new rules of the road and you mm -hmm. learn to say no to certain things and you're extra cautious and you just, it's all new. Um, Scott, I wanted to speak to something you said about Europe, um, actually. Um, we've not, we've seen a lot of Europe bookings actually, even, and we've had GTN members book, especially Greece last summer. Um, yes. I traveled to the UK in September. I was in France in December and I found European COVID protocols to be extremely good, extremely strict. Mm -hmm. And the way I would want them to be much better than where I, where I live here <laughs> in my little corner of the country. And I felt so safe both times. Um, and I, I, we are seeing, we have seen that European bookings already in 2021. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I was it traveled as well to Europe from September 30th through November 4th. I was wow. in Europe the entire time in, in various countries. And just like in the United States, depending on what, what state you live in, there were very different perspectives of the protocols. Uh, but for the most part, you, you know, you're still having full experience, still enjoying, and people are, you know, people are traveling. When I was in France in October, I could not get over how crowded Paris was. Mm -hmm. So like, people are out there and they're yeah. traveling. And as a travel advisor, if you're holding back and saying, I refuse to book somebody, well, then you're saying you're not interested in that business and people want to go. So why not take, why not help them do that? Well, and that's, that's a good point in terms of just the sentiment of clients have changed. Where in the early days of the pandemic, uh, you know, all of us were unsure of like, what is it safe to travel? We think it is, but what are the protocols? It was a patchwork of protocols. But over the last, especially like six to nine months, in generally speaking, almost every advisor I chat with will mention that their clients are ready to travel. They're ready to travel safely and, and smartly and traveling to the right destinations, but some of what's holding them back is the uncertainty of restrictions based on certain destinations that they're okay with taking a risk, like they, they're vaccinated or just okay with the risk of traveling and maybe getting something. They just don't wanna get stuck somewhere um, in that regard. The good thing about that is just seeing a lot of countries, a lot of destinations shifting from a solution of shutting down borders and realizing that's not a good long-term solution for their economy or the industry, but shifting towards better you know, vaccination requirements or, or testing protocols and things like that, as annoying as they are, they're probably some of the best tools that we have currently to be able to make sure things, things are stable and consistent so that we can continue rebuilding. Bring up some really good points, Scott, because the travel requirements in the various countries that we're all so used to planning for our clients uh, vary. So that, that adds another layer of expertise that you need to provide to your clients. And it's also gonna mean that some clients are still not ready to, to venture outside because of that fear of getting stuck, which continues to make domestic travel vacations in, 20, in 2022, a really important um, aspect that you need to have in your, in your wheelhouse. So where prior to COVID, many travel advisors did not focus at all on domestic vacations unless no. they were niche like the Disney market. They actually had to go out and learn, oh my goodness, how do I even sell and make it profitable to sell the U.S.? Uh, and and that and we saw the success of advisors in 21 who had the revenue is because they were selling U.S. And that's still going to be a focus uh, will, today for 22. And, you know, we, we think about guided vacation experiences for other parts of the globe, and we don't think about it as much as an option here in the U.S. And if you start looking at your supplier partners, you're going to see that, you know what, there's a lot of choices out there. There, you know, I'm so glad you brought that up, Jill. Thank you so much, because I feel it's a little bit sad that as an industry, as a profession, that we're not able to be, we're not as educated and we don't promote domestic mm -hmm. travel. And I feel like that is another silver lining. We just had an advisor do a hundred thousand dollar booking at Pause Up. I didn't even know what Pause Up was in 2019. <laughs> and now I know about Blackberry Farm, yes, Dwayne Farms, yes. Belmont, Pause Up, Amon, Lake, uh, what, Miraval, Austin, when I went there, and mm -hmm. I was like oh my gosh i need to stay at this property the prop the options domestic are amazing we just don't yeah. know about them and there's some 
fabulous hotel openings across the country. I'm like seriously amazing options. Oh, oh, go ahead, Bill. No, I just, I'm hoping we get back on track to this, uh, to, to where we were, because I'm anxious to talk about some of the topics that we have on the list. I know. Actually, I was going to go to you next. I, I was I was ready for you, Bill, because when we were talking, I mean, this was a good segue because we're talking about the top, um, you know, destinations. But Bill, when we were chatting, you're seeing a lot of specific um, niches that are um, like world cruise. I think you went well, on a world cruise. When too. Vanessa, when Vanessa brought up world cruise, it just got me going, right? The idea yeah. that I've I've booked two world cruises in the last 30 days. I hadn't booked two world cruises in the last five years. And so, and we're starting to see that. Aren't you, aren't you, aren't you guys seeing that? The world cruise market is going through the roof. The expedition trips are happening now. Um, whether you're a, an inexperienced agent or an experienced agent, these things are out there. Uh, destination weddings are through the roof, right? They're, I'm going, so-and-so is coming. It doesn't matter what's happening. And then I'm seeing an uptick in incentive travel. The idea of corporations and small companies saying, we're going to take 20 people to this resort, or, you know, we need to get away. Can you help us plan that? So that's what we're seeing a lot of that in the, in the newer, in the newer aspects of, of travel coming into 2022. Yeah, that, that's really cool. And that, and another thing too, um, I know that we were talking about is how advisors and I, I know I've talked to other people about this too, is just finding your niche is just so, so important right now to help you stand out. And Bill, you even, you were even saying that now a lot of agents will just say, Hey, they'll get a new client. And they'll be like, I'm going to be honest. I don't specialize in it. And I will send you to someone who does. Absolutely. And that awesome. has to happen. And that's another benefit to the host agency network is that you're going to know someone who can either help you ascertain that booking or take care of it for you down the road, take care of that client for you. And mm -hmm. I agree with you. Niche travel is very, very important. Uh, I feel that it's going to be it's going to be critical to market ourselves in the knowledge that we have for either specific destinations or products, um, and let that start to expand into 2023 and 2024, and what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, perfect. Again, another really good segue. You guys are the best. I love this. Is um, Vanessa? We were chatting about how this weekend, the story that you had this weekend is also a good. Um, you know, it helped since being in the host agency um, and having that community. Can you share the uh, the giant booking that one of your advisors yeah, had? Yeah, I'd, lo just I'd love to share that. And <laughs> I thank you. And uh, I love what Bill just said. And there's a reason why there's a cliche phrase of the rich, the riches that are in niches, right? And the, the more specific you are, the easier it is to market, you know? So it just lean into what Bill said for sure. So yeah, over the weekend, just to talk about, we Bill touched on the value of the host model and Jill mentioned it as well. So this whole community vibe and making sure that you're well aligned with a host agency with people that you can lean on. So we, we had a, an advisor over the weekend who got an inquiry uh, to do a very large six-figure booking with Cork. And it isn't a partner that we book in the network very often. Obviously, it's a very niche product. And it was Saturday. You know, we have not very many people working over the weekend. And she needed to get this booking pulled over. And so she just posted in the forum because she's really not familiar with Quark. And another member immediately within two minutes was like, I have the BDM on it. And so they got the BDM, somebody connected. So, and then within like hours, not even, it was the booking was made, a six figure booking on a Saturday. You know, awesome. had it have been like during the week, I mean, my, my team would have been more on it, but like on the weekend, you know, it's, we monitor things for emergencies. But that booking was made with the, it was a community effort <laughs> for that booking. Isn't it a blessing I, though to have them? Yeah. And I know Bill and Jill can share just the same and still have endless mm. stories of that as well. And that's super important in today's extremely changing dynamic environment. And one of the ways to stay successful and work through the headwinds as you're describing, I love that word. I keep using it. The description <laughs> that you use for this presentation is you know, making sure you're well aligned and you have a community of people, you cannot, you cannot even for one second think that you can do this by yourself. Totally. That is the self-sabotaging mindset mm -hmm. belief that you have yes. to pluck immediately if you're going to be an entrepreneur and be successful in this industry. You have to lean in. Yeah. No, and that's that's been a really cool theme that we've seen through throughout the last couple of years is the incredible community that travel advisors are in supporting yes. each other, regardless of host agency affiliation or consortia or independent uh, relationships like that. 
if they're connected, if they met at, met each other at a conference or part of a Facebook group, they're supporting each other and helping them through these. Like those stories are so inspiring to hear. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them in the chat too, that people are saying oh, just tons of bookings and those 33 day cruises. Oh, so that chat's awesome. on fire. That chat is awesome. When you, when you decide to take that leap to get into the travel industry and you're, you're now becoming an independent contractor, one of the hardest things for people is be, they're, they're usually coming from an employer-employee relationship where you have people that I can turn to in the office or now we're all turning you know, virtually, but you have somebody that you can turn to, help me with this, how do I do this? There's somebody to show you and guide you. And when you decide to become a travel advisor and you're now completely independent, especially if you're not hosted, don't know, we're all biased with that, but that 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 just doesn't make sense to me. There's no you there's no nobody, camps yeah, with this yeah. conversation. There's, there's nobody that there's nobody to turn to, you know. It's like, okay, I'm a travel advisor. Now what? You know, yes. you have to figure that out for yourself. And by being part of a host community um, and the travel advisor community community as a whole you will find us it is so supportive and, and and i love that about about this but it's a hard transition for many people because there's nobody to tell you what to do every day anymore there's, you've got I'm to figure so, that out yourself True. i'm so glad you brought that up jill is you know we were a brick and mortar from 1986 all the way till four years ago five years ago and we would just yell out, right? There were other agents in the building. So we'd just scream out, what's the promo code? What's the mm -hmm. protocols for this? We didn't say protocols back in the day, but whatever it was, we would just yell it out and someone would answer. And that's why this network, however you say, and I love Scott that you said, whether it's through ASTA or CLEAR, any conference you've been to, to have that network is so critical. It helps you. And, and you know, sometimes our agents, our advisors will get upset because they saw a silly question on, on our, in our Facebook groups. And I'm like, that's not a silly question. That's what they're having a concern with right now. They need an answer that, to this. Please help them out. And I always go in there and I say good teamwork if I see that they're all doing really good teamwork. Such a good point to make is, yeah, you know, when you are starting your own business and you're like, I have to find the motivation. So hopefully this <laughs> webinar helps helps push that forward a little bit there too. Um, but Jill, one thing that I really want to talk about, because I know you mentioned is um, social media and marketing. Because when we were chatting, you had this really cool success story of an advisor who is using TikTok. And TikTok is just awesome. I thought I was too old for it and I'm not. It is so cool <laughs> and it is awesome. All right, I'm going to get the app right now. You have to get <laughs> it, but prepare, you, you will lose time on it. not too old. <laughs> Bill's getting on TikTok. I love it. <laughs> my husband sits there at night on the in this in this chair and he's looking through. I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he's like, oh, I'm watching TikTok. I just, okay, whatever. <laughs> yes, it's so good. But can you share though how um, that advisor utilized it? They're they were pretty new, utilized and just business grew. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I talk about all the time to our our especially to our new to travel folks. Um, is the fact that, you know, we all think we're in the travel business and actually you're not, you're in the marketing business. Your job is to figure out how to market your services so that you get to do the fun things of booking travel. So you really are in the marketing business. And today, social media marketing is really important. Even when I decided to, you know, I come through to my role with Oasis uh, naturally through as an IC. I started my, turned my passion for travel uh, into my source of income back in 2012. And I decided I wanted to be a travel advisor. And how was I going to hang out that shingle when I didn't have a really strong social network myself? I did it on social media. But how I did it back then is very different than how people are doing it today. So I, I was really thrilled in watching this one advisor when I looked at myself and I grew a, a, a top producing IC business um, in one way on social media back then. And then back then it was 10 years ago, but um, and ago. how it's being yeah. done today, um, really amazing. And so I did it on Facebook. She's doing it on TikTok. And here's a woman who, a uh, young woman who decided in 2019 to leave the teaching profession and turn her passion for travel into her source of income. So she didn't know any better that 2020 was a tough year. And she went out and she used that year for, I'm going to learn all the things I need to learn. And she was delving into all the educationals and she was establishing herself on social media. 
and um, establishing her expertise. And she was out there continually promoting what she loved. So in 21, when bookings really started happening again, she had a really solid base. And I watched her grow her TikTok account to 63,000 followers of sharing what she loves about travel and all of her experiences. And in 2021, this newbie who doesn't know any better that this isn't a good thing, did $2 million in business. $2 million. Incredible. Because yeah, of TikTok. Oh <laughs> it's about to get on TikTok amazing. now. <laughs> so if you don't think social media is important, I'm telling you right now, you can will absolutely share your love of travel, share your expertise, and you will inspire people to want to travel. And hopefully they decide that you're the person to do it with, do that trip for them. Yeah, it's, it's crazy when you start thinking about entrepreneurs building businesses that are largely built off of word of mouth referrals. Mm-hmm. Roll the clock back 15 years before, generally speaking, most social media was like widespread. And that people somehow built businesses with word of mouth without those tools. And thinking about now the gift that social media is to your business of t- mm. being able to connect with literally True. almost yes. anyone at any time of day Amen. and share your business, share your passion, share tips and things like that. It is such an unbelievable, like mind blowing tool and asset that you can use in your business to be able to do it. And a lot of advisors like put it off and think of it to be more complex and more intimidating, start in simple ways, start in small ways sharing the trips you're taking, sharing some travel tips and things like that. It's a great way to get into it. And I'm seeing this in the chat, lots of communities out there, lots of Facebook groups, just ask for help, ask for some yeah. tips. They will I gladly wanna, help you. People love like to share chomp, Can I, chomp, I'm just chopping at the bit to like jump in about this one thing. Sorry, I'm gonna, I know this wasn't what I was supposed to talk about, but first of all, I just wanna say what Scott said, like think of it this way, like there's never been a better time to be a small business owner because like 10, 20 years ago, you had to pay a PR marketing firm to access this kind of marketing intelligence. When it comes to Facebook, Facebook, whether you agree with it or not, is the largest aggregator of marketing intelligence on the planet. And, you know, I'm seeing some comments here about, I need to learn that platform. I need to learn TikTok. I love, look, my daughter and I love to watch Facebook reels, which is essentially fed in through from TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. I have no interest in learning TikTok. I'm sorry. My brain is too saturated. So if you're in the camp of, I don't want to learn another platform, I have good news for you. Facebook is the largest aggregator of marketing intelligence on the planet. We have an advisor that basically PDF strips out his consortia fed in our case, virtual so uh, consortia fed marketing, which you can do with travel leaders and signature as well, any of them, and then repurposes them as Facebook ads. And he sold immediate, um, you know, $30,000 St. Lucia booking from targeting high net worth areas. So you just have to learn ads manager. So learn TikTok, learn Instagram, learn Facebook. Don't feel like you have to learn them all. That's what I just want to give yourself permission that if you're like, oh crap, now I have to learn TikTok. No, if you're not inspired by it, or if you're listening to Jill and you're like, I have to learn TikTok, learn TikTok. Cause then you're coming at it from a place of inspiration. But if you're coming from a place of like, oh, then don't worry about it. Just stick to the other platform. Go speak to your grandkids about it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really, it really yeah. is important for you to say, figure out, okay, where is it to, to Vanessa's point about the, 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 uh, the ability of Facebook to tell you where the market, where the uh, consumers are and who the consumers are, you need to figure out who do I want to market to yes. and go where yeah. that audience is. You know, that doesn't mean you have to be on every platform. So it's such a valid point, Vanessa. Excellent. Thank you for bringing isn't that, that up. A, isn't that a good point, Jill, compared to uh, three or four years ago, uh, throwing anything out there? Now, in our industry, we can target who we want to be our customer yeah, and which absolutely. business we want. Good point. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's so, I actually just recorded a podcast with someone, it'll be coming out here soon um, about social media. And that's, I'm so glad you said that, Vanessa, because at the end where she was like, Hey, just remember, you don't have to do everything that I just said. Just pick one thing, you know, and and run with it. And the nice thing too is travel, social media was like made for travel pretty much because you have the photos, the, you know, showing the experiences. I mean, there's an endless amount of things. Establish yourself as an expert. That's that's why Mm -hmm. Jill's story, that's why, because she established herself as an expert. She used Mm -hmm. TikTok as her marketing vehicle. There is one more very important thing to mention when it comes to social media. Remember though, at the end of the day, you do not own that marketing asset. 
So part of your social media strategy needs to always be driving people off social media and onto your email list because you own that marketing asset. That's critical. Good point. You know, it used to be back in the day, we would go hang out at the hair salons. Um, we even put an agency into a hair salon because those were our best customers. Now we just target the stylist because they're our best marketing uh, for us. Yeah, that's a good tip. I know. Oh, I love that. And actually on that, this is um, one of the last things I want to talk about is just the advice and tips that you all have for everybody. But um, Vanessa, you were already talking about this. So I kind of want to go with you on this is just the consistent marketing. You talked about how Mm -hmm. one of the most important things is that consistent marketing, email marketing. I'll let, I'll let you share more about that. For the GTN members that are on here, they know that I say this often. I'm known for saying consistency builds confidence, you know, and we often, I just talked about building your email list and moving people off social media and making sure you're growing your email list. We often uh, equate, or we have a parallel analogy for your email. Think of your email list and your ability to show up consistently in somebody's inbox every week professionally with good branding, professional branding is equivalent to, you know, back in the day with a storefront, you know, consider it your virtual storefront, you know, back when travel was Main Street USA and you had to go to your local travel advisor and pick the brochure up the rack and book travel, which still exists in many parts of the country. But when that was the only mode of distribution, would you want to book with a travel agent who sometimes was open? You didn't really know what their hours of operations were. Their sign didn't look very good. Things were outdated. Maybe it looked like somebody, you know, did a crack to make up something, make the sign, you know, you have to think about these things when you're showing up in people's inbox. Like my inbox is full right now with promotions from all my favorite stores. I don't read every single one, but I see that little Kate Spade email showing in my inbox every day. And eventually (laughs) I click and I buy the, I buy it. That's how email marketing works. You've Mm got to be consistent and that'll lead to a conversion and you have to show up professionally. You know, if you look DIY, you'll get DIY. You have to make your brand consistent, be intentional about your fonts, your colors, and and just be intentional about that. You're a business. And so email marketing is my big action item tip. It's not dead. It's still actually the number one form of digital marketing. Um, Social compliments that they work together synergistically. So that would be my tip. That's really good, uh, Vanessa, just like sales fundamentals 101 consistency. Mm-hmm. In sales, you call it follow-ups. In marketing, you call it consistency and touch points, but that the success is achieved by multiples of touch points, not yes. a single touch point once exactly. a year or twice a year. Such an important point. Yeah, I love I love that. And I just looked at the time I'm like, oh my God, we only have 11 minutes. That was so fast. So, um, so to give more time uh, for all of our panelists, um, I just want to open it up for any advice and tips, something that we didn't get to talk about. I know there's so much, but um, Jill, Bill, Scott, any other um, advice, tips that you have? Oh, absolutely. I really think that it's important, um, regardless of pandemic, no pandemic, business and best business practice in general is uh, in order to be successful, you need to start with a goal. And when you start talking about a business plan that can feel overwhelming, so just break it down and start yourself with a goal. And whatever that goal is, now you need to work backwards. How are you going to achieve that goal? And start jotting down ideas of what you want to do to, to make sure that you achieve that goal. And I also think it's important that because you no longer have a, a supervisor or a boss, you need to manage yourself the same way a boss would manage you. you got to manage your productivity. You have to set expectations the same way your boss would have done that. So you, this is your work day. And if today is your tasks are here, and at the end of the day, you didn't accomplish your tasks, you have nobody to blame but yourself on that. And so you need to really start managing your time effectively so that you can achieve your goals. Think of yourself, you know, get that little third person going on here, the boss who should be whispering in your ear about the things you need to do to manage your time, manage your productivity so that you can get to your goals. You're going to get out of this business exactly what you put into it. But the best part about being an entrepreneur is that you own that success. Nobody can take, take that away from you. If you've reached that goal, that's all because of you. So just start out with setting a goal and work towards getting to it at the end of the year. 
So I'll go right along with what Jill said. I love those. I love that because it segues into uh, something I have. I just have three quick points. Number one is to learn something new every single day. Choose a new resort chain that you're not familiar with. Choose some type of a cruise line that you're not familiar with, river or ocean, it doesn't matter. And get to know some other specific destination that you think might become popular. And there's all kinds of uh, historical data Domestic. on that. Domestic. <laughs> yes, and understand domestic. Absolutely. Good question. Good point, Vanessa. I would like everyone to take Jill's idea and put away some money. Put away 10% of your commission. Just put it into a savings account. Do something with it to make sure that it's secure so that we run into rough times. You'll have that security blanket. And then the other thing is, I want to say, stop using your BDM for fires and start using your BDM yes. for business development. <laughs> Get into business development back with your BDM. They're not there anymore to put out fires for you. There's enough service with that company that should be doing that. Business development is what they're there for. Please start to use them for that purpose. Yeah, well, and to marry what Jill and Bill are saying together, talk to your BDMs about your goals, about mm -hmm. what you're wanting to do in the next year, two years, because in many instances, they may know what's coming down the pipeline for their specific supplier that they can talk to you about. And in many instances, they, not many instances, almost all instances, if they don't want to work with you, you're working with the wrong supplier, but um, they want to work with you to help you achieve those goals because it means success for them and success for the supplier. Talk to them about those. Uh, a lot of the suppliers and BDMs I meet at conferences are unbelievable extroverts to the point that I don't even, they're like, they're like Stephanie times a thousand of them in a room. And so true. And they want to meet every person, connect with every person, learn about every person and learn about their business and their goals and stuff and be a part of it. Like use that to not use that to your advantage in an opportunistic sense, but like they want to help you That's along the way. So talk. For. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, Stephanie, you had said that you wanted us to make sure that we give away action item tips. And if there's anybody that's been listening to this, that's feeling like, wow, it seems like everybody's getting all this business and my phone's not ringing and my inbox is not dinging. You know, if you're, if you're in that camp, guess what? All you have to do your action item, your to do from this is go reach out to a BDM. They are yes. sitting on business marketing gold, ask them for what other people are doing and something's going to spark for yes. you. Yes. Go set a zoom meeting with a BDM. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love Great that. Points. And and you can collaborate on social media too. We've, we've said that one, we've seen some pretty cool stuff with that you can marry social media that we talk about in that. It's perfect. So many actions. Stephanie, I have one yeah. more thing, a kind of yes. a shout out to Travify because you guys have amazing product for our agents. Oh, okay. um, I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with uh, one of our agents, again, from Minnesota, ironically today, a policeman. <laughs> and he said that he's so busy, he's grown so much. He came to his first boot camp with us uh, two years ago, two and a half years ago. And um, he said, here's how I'm doing it, Bill. Because I, I, one other thing that is, that's really important is, do we need another agent to work with or do we need an admin or an assistant? Who else can we partner with in the business to help us through all of these situations we're going through? Schedule changes and documents, et cetera. So his daughter does all of the, um, all of the uh, itinerary building on Travify and his wife does all the documents for all the clients. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. Yes. I love that team effort of family yes. affair. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I did see um, some that were mentioning, asking about Travify questions too. And um, we, and Travify Academy, we don't typically talk about or get into the product, but hit us up and we will be more than happy to let you know <laughs> at professional at uh, <laughs> Well, and I uh, do want to just say thank you to uh, Jill and Bill and Vanessa, because like looking at the chat, so much love for you guys and your teams and your organizations coming in. It, there are a ton of amazing host agencies out there, but all of you guys run amazing, amazing organizations and the, the, uh, your advisors in the chat and stuff are a testament to that. Oh yeah. It's been so much fun. This chat is like, is on fire. It's so cool. And, and I want to thank, I'm not, I'll, I'll uh, still share our, our winners here um, in a second, but Thank you all again. This is incredible. And to have these minds on one webinar like this is truly a gift. And we are so thankful for you all joining us. And as Scott said, having these organizations that we get to work with. And so it is so incredible. And with that being said, let's share some items here. Some, some Ooh, prizes. Drum roll. 
Drum roll. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, and I should explain what they are. Um, so the prices, <laughs> I forgot. I got oh, so yeah, excited. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so what we do. You get a cruise. You get a cruise. Yeah. You get a cruise. Oh, you, <laughs> you know what? Maybe ne next year, 2023 sales, we are um, pump making it bigger. Maybe we'll have those. But we try to get those. But, you know. Um, so we actually reached out to some of our um some of the partners, DMOs that we work with. And it's a really crazy time right now. Um, and But our Avanti destinations actually gave three things. So they are each a $25 gift card. And it's to um, a company of your choice. They have a list and they have the good ones like Target and all those good ones, you know, Amazon good stuff. Um, and then, um, and they're also giving, um, an apron, which I think is branded. It, it goes with, um, the theme of what they have. Um, but then also Travify, we wanted to also give, um, two prizes and we're going to do a $25 gift card to Amazon and a swag bag. So we will reach out to everybody and get your sizes and everything, but all right, Scott, you ready for a drum roll? All Here right. We go. I was a professional drummer. True story. Yes. <laughs> Scott was, he was in a band. Okay. Here we go. Here it is. Here are our winners. Congratulations. Yes, we have Pamela, Sean, and Chris, Cheryl. So I will be reaching out Sean. to all of you. Oh my God, that's awesome. Oh, you see familiar names in here? How yes. awesome. So great. Yeah, it's it was really cool. This I this was really awesome. I just have to say again, this was so much fun. I was correct that this was going to be one heck of a webinar. Um, so really cool. And just want to thank everybody again. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. Um, I'll have this recording up so you can share it with um, the rest of your uh, friends, colleagues, if you'd like, and enjoy the rest of your day and happy 2022. Yeah. Yes. Yes. God thank you so much right. again. Thanks so it much, is. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Yes, thank you so much.